no pressure. I finally got it all down and finished my first book of poetry. 101 poems about all sorts of stuff, cramped between two covers and gasping for air again. How'd you follow it? I mean, I have enough poems to last a lifetime, but are they any good? Maybe. In many ways, I'm a victim of my own success. I get stressed and depressed because to better my best is essential, but I can't always produce the goods I'm known for. But isn't that just the meaning of life, condensed into eight lines and demystified? Or am I going crazy because Lemmy died? No pressure, but you could date this poem down to the last second. 1.15pm, Tuesday 29th of December 2015, sitting on the wall outside the office. Ayahuasca. Dry skin like lightning, chained to the rocks and coming down without a fight. Two-toned and terrible, all out tired and never tested in bonsai kamikaze runs. Never surrender unless the guns are outnumbered. Solemn-faced heroes holding their stomachs in. Brutal nothings promised godless, falling down the stars at oblique angles. Tins of food piled loosely, bouncing up and down along the waterfront. The shortest wavelength is the distance between two points, post-coital and loveless, wasting lives in line just to fix things that can't be fixed, irreparably water-damaged at the hands of a Baptist. Human heads like tangerines with teeth marks in, uneasily bleeding past participles. Sheep milk milked sheepishly and screamed for tears, cooped up in the back of an unmarked police car. Visions of death and destruction raining from the sky. Death metal bands hammer sounds and wear their frowns like dressing gowns. Wildcats in the jungle sleeping calmly with no remorse. Sleeping wildcats morphing into lizard men before my eyes. All I can do is tell the truth, that's it, there's no quick switch and no time to quit by the exits. I have no filter and it gets me into trouble because trouble follows me around like an abusive boyfriend. An abusive boyfriend follows me around like trouble. Ah. Ah, I'm sitting alone in the Rose and Crown drinking Fosters and the football's on and so's the snooker and Ronnie O'Sullivan's playing but I can't see the screen and I think I might be going mental. Last time I got drunk I left my bag in the cross keys. I'm not sure where my notebook is and I felt like shit for two days and not just because of the hangover. See, I'm kinda like you because I trust too easily and despite the cynicism I'm still always an optimist somehow. It reminds me of how fiction is getting your dick out and poetry is full frontal nudity of the mind. Ah, sometimes the world should burn with me in it and I won't light the match but I'll watch the flames and try to save myself. Emotional hedgehogs. I don't feel much like talking. I feel like walking in random directions until I fall down in the middle of the road and get hit by passing cars like some giant emotional hedgehog. I feel like I can't keep on trying without guidance. I feel like people guide you in the wrong direction. I don't feel much like doing anything. I feel like snapping my pens, burning my notebooks and moving to a rickety log cabin on the side of a mountain and growing lettuces and tomatoes. I feel like cutting myself into little pieces and posting myself through my own letterbox. Talk about red letter days. I feel like hiding in a blanket fort or quitting my job and moving back to Tamworth and working in a bar with less money and more morals. I'm not cut out to be a marketer. I don't like lying. I don't feel much like talking. I feel like a giant emotional hedgehog, all spiky and shit. Sparklers. Sometimes you write poems that are personal, painful and kind of too true to ever share them. So I wrote this poem about a sparkler I found lying on the floor. And when I tried to light it, nothing happened. Somehow, it still feels personal. Diamonds and stars. Diamonds aren't beautiful, they're just carbon compressed and set into precious metals, and stars are just great big balls of fire, kind of beautiful like a funeral. Disorder is fucking gorgeous. Sometimes I get stressed and remember we're all lucky to be here. We're all explorers using astronomical clocks and zodiacal guidelines to navigate the valleys. My rationale is irrational and passive, which is why I get ruled by my emotions. You want to know what's beautiful? Go look in the mirror. His brother's beard. Yeah, so Anne uploaded this video and he was like, this is me. And I was like, holy cow, when did I forget myself? And then I realised, I mean, I'm not defined by whoever I happen to be with. And anyway, what? What? I don't get it. And Ant has this beard and I kind of want to stroke it. Don't get me wrong. His brother's beard is beautiful, but it's different. I'm not beautiful. In fact, I'm kind of a liability, but I've got a keyboard too. And don't be scared, you have 3,226 subscribers. Chaos Theory People need uncertainty, because when you're certain of something, you're certain to be sorely disappointed. Taxes and death and death taxes. Me? I like the grey areas where certain things are certifiably uncertain, like Schrodinger's cat or smashing a clock with a baseball bat. I don't like waking up when every day is the same, so I try to cause some chaos to change things and shake things up. 
Sometimes you gotta be stymied before you're reminded to try to be lively, and when that's the case, you're certainly furtive. Or maybe you're not so sure. Things I want to say when you're sad and or stressed, but I don't say because I'm shy and also I ramble like I did with the title of this poem. Hey, keep your powder dry and don't let the bastards grind you down. Mind how you go, look after yourself and cheer up because it might never happen. Just keep swimming, just keep on keeping on and don't worry about a thing, it's easy. It's like eating wine and drinking ice cream because you can do it if you want, but it's not a requirement. Hey, mate, mind how you go, stay safe and remain amazing. When I rule the world. Marie's got this list of the people who'll be the first with their backs against the wall when the revolution comes. Why so serious, Marie? Be positive. I've already formed my new world order, so get ready for this. Marie, you're in charge of the people who'll be the first with their backs against the wall. I'll be in charge of tones of voices. But every tyrant needs a proofreader, and besides, I'd rather read my books and leave you to it. Vantablack. You'd look good in Vanta Black, the blackest of blacks built from a forest of carbon nanotubes on aluminium foil, absorbing light at 99.99% .99 efficiency and turning it into heat or something. Now, I don't do science or colours, but I know that you'd look good covered in vertically aligned nanotube arrays. It's like Sir Anish Kapoor who said it's like paint and imagined a space so dark that you forget who you are and what time it is. You have great resistance to vibrations, greater thermal stability and military applications, and I know you're not NASA, but you'd look good in Vantablack. Now we just need to find a brighter red. The Manifesto. I'm not like other people. Other people seem to understand other people, but in my experience, it takes at least five years to even think you know someone, and then they do something stupid, and I do stupid things too. I hate writing and being creative because it exposes you like dick pics on Tinder and Snapchat and I'm basically waving words beneath your mouth and asking you to suck them. I miss falling asleep with people. The night has many terrors and I am one of them. Some days I think about suicide. In fact, most days. So I steal scalpels from work and scare the shit out of people when they fall out of my pocket in the middle of the slug and lettuce. I think that's probably normal. I think that's probably normal because the other day I had this great idea about a serial killer who uses fake profiles on Tinder to lure victims and so now I'm scared to use Tinder. Although I don't really use it anyway because the women are so depressing and so am I. And I'd rather go for a beer with Sandy Toxvig than sleep with Kim Kardashian because at least she makes a living with her brains and not her body. Although Kim is probably a surprisingly shrewd businesswoman because she married a dickhead with lots of money. I don't want to marry a dickhead with lots of money. I don't want to get married. I'm not like other people. Other people are not like me. Probable cause. I finally realised life is like a tower of cards and maybe you use glue or steel cards from someone else but basically you're trying to build your tower without knocking it down. Some people get married and attain some next level tower of card skills and then they take a hairdryer in the form of an affair or a crippling gambling addiction and they try to knock down their house of cards. Some people build their tower with love and compassion and then something like cancer comes along and messes it up for everyone. But hey, any one life is as good as another, I guess. Me, I left my cards in a wallet I lost somewhere. Vertigo. All the way up at the top of a mountain looking all the way down into underground valleys where rivers carve rocks over time into granite and limestone. Simple stalagmites you bump into and you can see for miles. It's like an eye test when you wake up blind and don't mind it, hanging grimly on to the last thing you saw, a friendly face twisted with concern at the roadside. Maybe we watch too many movies. I know I can't tell the difference between a vampire and a werewolf and the guy who lives upstairs, which is why I like garlic and why I shot the moon with a silver bullet. You gotta be quiet like a mouse or loud like a lion. You gotta keep trying and crying and flying through life on a hang glider. Just hang on. Broken bodies never look good, no matter how fit they were before they fell and hit the ground. <laughs>